We just talked about the new Suicide Squad game and how everybody hates it. Yeah, everybody hates that one. I have been watching some of the cutscenes. I haven't seen the entire thing yet, but ah. I'm up to the point where uh, Batman kidnaps the Flash. Oh, okay. That's like yeah. still pretty early, isn't it? Yeah. I, it's really bumming me out because I'm like, you know, seeing the Flash pop up, like, not brainy. I'm like, yes! Yeah. Somebody's here, yes! And I'm, but I'm also like, god damn, I know he's going down. Um, yep. Here's the thing about this, uh, and full spoilers for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Um, <laughs> uh, so you have been warned. There will be time codes when we start talking about the first comic, so you can jump to that if you need to. Um, but here, because I, I know they killed Batman. I know they killed pretty much everybody. Um, mm-hmm. I don't inherently have a problem with them killing Batman, even this version of Batman. But no. here's the thing, because he dies still under the influence of Brainiac, right? Yes, yes. I think... How I would have done this is I would have um, had it so that in the boss fight, you as the Suicide Squad, like, fatally wound Batman. And then Brainiac senses this and is able and is kind of like he just you know, he pulls his influence from Batman and is like, I have my energy can be better served elsewhere. So I'm just going to like, you know, I'm just going to let Batman yeah, be yeah. Batman again. And then we get like two minutes of him and like just being, you know the Arkham universe version of Batman and have him having to kind of like reckon with all the people he killed as Brainiac Batman. Um, and then also like, so that the audience could actually get a legitimate goodbye with that character instead mm-hmm. of just uh, you know, like a, like a, him just yelling at Harley Quinn before she shoots him in the head. And I also think like, I've heard people say like, maybe Batman should have been, maybe Batman and Wonder Woman's role should have been reversed in this game because Batman's the character that we have, known and played as for three or four games depending on if you count arkham origins which i think also would make sense i i have not yeah. seen up to the part where wonder woman pops up um so i don't know maybe she's great in this game but i think yeah it makes sense that uh you'd want to have you know kevin conroy you know and i'm I mean, sure like i'm sure it was yeah. fun for him to kind of play villain batman so maybe you can do that mm-hmm. at some point and have him kind of turn towards the end but like i think it would make sense to have him kind of not brainiac early on um uh, yeah i mean I don't know if I agree with the 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 roles being so small. Well, it would have been cool. I just think you know Batman with all his contingencies would have just taken them out like without like remorse essentially. While sure. like you know Wonder Woman in this one, she like she actually tries to save them. She doesn't want to kill any of them, you know. So um, so yeah. I mean Bruce wouldn't have killed any of them. <sighs> no, this version. I mean, there's a point where when Bruce shows up. Harley Quinn is straight up like, don't worry, guys. Batman doesn't kill people. He would not have killed the other members of the Justice League. I mean, like, that's the whole reason for Batman, though. It's like, he is not afraid to, like, like, for, in 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 this case, like, with, like, his friends and superheroes, like, he knows them, I feel like, enough to be like, they wouldn't want this, and if I can't find a way to save them, then they, you know, they need to get put down. That's always been, like, his thing, though, too, because, right, he's always had, like, the plans to take down each individual member of the Justice League. No, not just that... in this universe. I think in general he would. Wow. Th- if wow. it really ultimately came down to it, yeah. I listen. I am not like I'm not somebody who gets like really angry when like Batman. Like I don't really care that Batman kills people in the Snyderverse. Like it's its own yeah. thing. Like it's like sure it's dumb but like whatever i don't it, it doesn't like offend me deeply you know personally um but i know a lot of people are i i straight up think he absolutely would not i think like early comics batman 100 he was like a yes. cold-blooded killer <laughs> yeah but uh but like this era of comics batman i think this version of the game batman i don't think he would i think he would you know he would take them down, but he wouldn't kill them, I don't think. He would, you know, he because he also probably has a way to contain each of them that is fairly reliable while he looks for another way to save them. So I think there's no way he kills okay, them. Okay, yeah, like, yeah, I, I think it'd be, like, a last, last resort. But, like, after seeing all the damage they actually have done, and I, uh, with Brainiac, I don't think Batman would have been able to, like, pull them out of it in that sense. So, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know if it well, would have been Batman that did it, it or if he would have been, like, Suicide Squad go do it, or I don't know, but yeah, I think it's the same kind of dilemma there because it's like, I mean, I know you're saying like once he sees that all the damage they done, but it's like, well, the Joker is still alive, and I think that is testament to the opposite of that because Joker has killed so many people, and that's often been an argument yeah. like, why don't you just kill him? 
you're killing one person, but you are saving probably hundreds of others. And Bruce is still like, no, absolutely not, because I'm not going to kill somebody. You know, that's absolutely just yeah. like. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think that would still kind of. Um, I don't think that would necessarily matter the amount of damage they're doing. Uh, I think he would still just be like, nah, I'm not doing that. It depends. Of course, it depends on the version. Like, there's there's versions of Batman's that would do it, mm -hmm. but um, most of the movie Batman's would in a heartbeat. But um, <laughs> they wouldn't even consider. They'd be like, yeah, fuck you. I'm gonna yeah, kryptonite bullet to the head. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't I don't think main comic Batman would. I don't think Arkham Batman would. Anyway. Uh, everybody go play Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Uh, it's out now. Oh. It's uh, on all platforms. Um, it's a, <laughs> we are not sponsored. <laughs> um, I just love this game so much that I haven't played and everybody hates. So, you know, just everybody go play this shit game uh, if you love wasting money. Is it? Do you think it's better or worse than Avengers? Oh, man, dude. I'm going to be honest. I think Avengers is like my least favorite game of all time. Like, I wow, spent, that is dude, crazy. It's just, I just got so, I'm so mad at that game because I spent $60. Yeah. Rebuying that me, I did too. piece of yeah. shit for it to just, I literally played it, like, sped through that so fast. And I, I like, you know, usually I'm like, okay, if I like half enjoy, I'm like, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll like, go back, you know, try and get some trophies here and there, you know, because that's what I do. And, but no, dude, that one I literally finished and I was like, all right, that was. That was fucking terrible. I never want to touch this. Yeah, again. we reviewed and it. I never, and I never wanted... uploaded the review. <laughs> yeah, I know. But you went back for like some of the DLCs and I stuff. Did. Like the, the and extra I did. stories. I maintain those expansions are not bad. Um, I actually I think the core combat is fine. I just think, and I, or even good. I just think the enemies are not fun to fight against. I think the capabilities you have in that game as a player are fun. I just think. The developers designed enemies that specifically contradicted your capabilities in every way that makes that game not fun. Uh, if the enemies yeah. were better, I think it would be pretty decent. And also if the, you know, monetization uh, was not so ridiculous. Um, but from what I've heard of Suicide Squad, it seems like people really like the traversal, but the actual, mm -hmm. like, shooting mechanics and everything is just like, this is not very fun. <laughs> um, oh. So I would actually probably, I'd probably take... Avengers over over Suicide Squad. Having not played Suicide Squad. All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Earth's Mightiest Comics, the show where every week we talk about the new comics that came out that week, and we give our thoughts and opinions on them. Uh, we let you know whether we think they're real good or just real pieces of shit. So, um, yeah, this week we've got, uh, it's, it's definitely a lighter week. We're talking about the, uh, fifth week of January's comics output, which, um, any fifth week of the month is usually lighter than most of the other weeks of the month. Uh, although first weeks of the month have been pretty light for me lately as well. Anyway, this week we'll be talking about things like the new issue of Avengers Twilight, new issues of Duke, Incredible Hulk, uh, there's a new comic from Kid Cudi that came out called Moon Man, but we are gonna start this episode off with... The finale of Titans Beast World. This is Titans Beast World number six. Uh, it is written by Tom Taylor, and we have uh, we have a couple artists on this issue. We have Lucas Mayer, Ivan Reese, and Eduardo Pansica. Uh, this is, as mentioned, the finale of the Beast World event that has been going on for the past couple months. So this um, here's the thing with this one. I think hmm. this issue and this event as a whole, but particularly this issue, was kind of marketed as this is going to evolve the DC universe. And obviously that's partially a plan where it's just, it's like, you know, animals and beast world and, you know, evolution. Yeah, yeah. Like there's obviously that, but it was kind of setting itself up to drastically shift the DC universe in some pretty major ways based on what it would kind of, you know, market itself as. That being said, I don't think it really did. There's like two things in this issue that will probably have lasting effects going forward. Uh, one of them is something that we've already known about for a long time, which is that Amanda Waller is consolidating, uh, consolidating power and mm -hmm. now she's got she's like taken over the hall of justice and now it's the hall of order yes. um and so she's like kind of yeah she's like very heavily kind of in charge of a lot of government processes now that's kind of been in the background of dawn of dc since the start so that's not really new um the other thing is that uh raven uh raven fights other raven dr hate raven in this issue okay. there's a big old fight and we think the audience thinks that Raven wins, but Raven does not win. It's actually Dark Raven that wins. And then Dark Raven traps Titan's Raven in the same diamond that Dr. Hate Dark Raven was trapped in before. I don't think, I also don't think that will have big implications on the DCU 
I think that'll have very big implications on Titans, but yes. not on necessarily the entire universe. So I do think it was maybe not the, um, you know, the I think the way it was marketed as maybe a little bit misleading. That being said, I still think this is pretty solid. I don't think it was amazing. I do still kind of think that this ish, this event kind of did drop in quality after about the halfway point. But I do still think it's not it's not terrible. It, I think I thought it was all right here. I don't know. Was there anything else major that happened in this one? I will say that um yeah yeah the kind of a big one. I don't I mean I don't know like, fucking like uh, oh Gar's alive. Gar yeah. isn't dead. <laughs> <Right>. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, but I was gonna say, um, I feel like they could have milked the, um, the, uh, Chaos Helmet or whatever it's called. Uh, yeah, God, right. Helm of, Helm of Chaos? No, yeah, dude? Flash just know. drops it in a, uh, in a volcano. Yeah, I feel like they could have, they could have milked it a bit more with that one. I mean, maybe it's, like, not destroyed, maybe it, like, can't be melted like that. I don't know how mystical artifacts, you know, they're mystical artifacts. Who knows how they work in the end. But uh, I feel like they could have milked that a bit more, like maybe like the fight between Raven and Dark Raven, you know, that they had a scuffle, but in the end, Dark Raven loses and she like just teleports away. And so that way she can like come back later, but at, still as Dr. Hate, not just Dark Raven. Um, what else? See, I um, actually don't know if I agree with that, because I think it does, this way it changes up the dynamic in a way that does probably will end up changing relationships and stuff in the future because i think if it just like if she just left and then came back to his doctor hate again i'll be like well we kind of already just did this so i don't know if we kind of need to see that again well i'm just saying like for the implications of like ultimately changing the dcu right because yeah. like, at this point she's not even doctor hate anymore she's just dark raven you know yeah so that's 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 what i meant like for lasting implications of dcu DCU? I don't know. Yeah. I know the new DC universe, like, movie universe is going to be called the DCU, but this also says DCU. Watches the DCU is forced to evolve or die, so... Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, Beast with Beast Boy coming back to life. Uh, I, I, I like the way they did it. I, I'm glad it wasn't just oh, he's just, you know, just like randomly like he comes through a portal weird... and he's okay again yeah. yeah exactly like i'm like the way they they thought they did it was um essentially well, who was it that was it dark raven that told raven no um or... no dark raven was telling somebody else or somebody else told dark raven that she's like yes let's do it no 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 no, no. it was um uh dark raven and dark raven were scuffling and then dark raven told the uh the animal people or she basically told Raven the animal people were going to kill her, but they didn't. And that's when Raven realized oh, that right. yeah. Gar was still alive in the stars yeah. that were trapped in the Beast People. But the Titans were killing off the stars, obviously, to save the people. Yeah. And so they trapped all of the stars. Instead of, they stopped killing them, and they trapped all of them in Titan's Tower, where they reformed into essentially an empty-minded Beast Boy. He was just, like, a yeah. body with, like, no mind. And then... The Doctor Chimp Man, Detective Chimp. Uh, I guess he remembered that they cut off one of the uh, Starro, like when he Beast Boy was Starro, uh, one of the tentacles, and the rest of that brought back his mind. Yeah. So you know, uh, very, very like, not very, very complicated, but like a bit more complicated than just him walking through a portal, being like, "Hey, I'm alright." Yeah. Which is you know nice. It's it's always nice when it's just something different. Yeah, I, I I I agree that the way that Gar came back, I think works fine. I think I still have a problem with the fact that he dies for one full issue and then he's just back. I think that's a little bit again. I think it's just like kind of some cheapening of the impact. Uh, clearly, like he was just killed in the first place to like add some shock value, shot factor, and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's the other thing. I think this uh, event was kind of marketed as being more Beast Boy heavy. And, like, for the first four issues, he's just a big... Well, I'll say two, three, and four. He's just a big mindless starfish. And then he dies in four. He's not in five. And he shows up right at the end of six. So that's the other thing mm -hmm. I think. Uh, but, I mean, that's ultimately that's not a huge deal. But, um, yeah. Let's see. Is there anything else kind of... Anything else right around here? Let's see. Oh, Nightwing almost revealed his identity to the president. Yes. Um, and the president was like, no, no. Don't do that. I trust you. Yeah. Uh, but that could have been big. But, you know. Yeah. Could have been big, but it wasn't in the end. Yeah, because Nightwing's a coward, is what you're saying. <laughs> okay, sure, bro, <laughs> sure. Yeah, I guess the way the DCU is going to change is the fact that, um, kind of how Marvel's changed, where, like, uh, like people don't trust in superheroes, I guess. Because, like, I know in Marvel right now, it's, um, 
it's like illegal to be a superhero or something, right? Yeah, now? that's from uh that's from the Daredevil event a couple years back, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um I guess in, in DC right now, that's kind of what it's heading towards. I don't know if it's gonna be like illegal to be a superhero or if it's just gonna be like essentially like it's uh, I guess it'd yeah, it'd be illegal because if the police start going after him, it'd be it'd essentially be like It seems it seems more like Waller's just gonna be like, hey, if you wanna kill superheroes, I'll pardon you. <laughs> that seems more like kind of the mm. direction they're going, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it'd be like privatized or something. Uh yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I, I thought this was fine though. I I don't know. How are you how how are you feeling about the the event as a whole? I actually I, I enjoyed the event. I um I liked for the most part I liked all of the core series. I didn't think any of them were like super bad like some of the yeah. uh, past ones we've had. So yeah, as a whole, I didn't, I didn't, mind, I didn't overly mind it. I thought it was pretty good, actually. As a, as, a, as a, as events that we've had goes, I gave most of them like pretty much like six or above, except yeah. for like three, I think, where I gave less. Yeah, I think. Okay, we might as well go into our segment here: better or worse than Night Terrors. Um, mm. I'll let you All go right. first here. Better or worse than Night Terrors, Sebastian? I ultimately think it was better. I'm not sure on this one because I think. It's definitely better than Gotham War. It's better mm. than Contest of Chaos. I don't know if I think it's better than Night Terrors. I think I think Night Terrors might be better, Sebastian. This is horse cadoodle. I think I'm gonna say this is worse than Night Terrors for the third time in a row. Night Terrors is still on top. <laughs> it's number one, baby. Um, it's, it's a meme. It's, it's not a even. Meme Listen, it's, it's at not this even. point. No, I, I'm not. I'm not. Maybe it is a meme. I mean, it's not because we don't have enough of a fan base to make it a meme. Um, but uh, <laughs> but but I am not memeing yet. I genuinely think. Here's the thing. I think yes, there were more tie-ins in Night Terrors. Yes. Yes. A lot of them were worse than uh, most of the tie-ins in this series. But I still think the core series of Night Terrors was better than the core series of Beast World. Maybe not by much. But I do think, again, as it went on, I think this event got less interesting. And then you also, again, you have the really good tie-ins in Night Terrors. There aren't that many of them, but they exist. I don't think there was a single um, tie-in to this event that I thought was great. Uh, so, yeah, listen, I'm going to just, I'm giving it to Night Terrors again, you know? Night Terrors is undefeated. Well, see, I think the next uh, event, by the way, I gave this issue a 7. Uh, we didn't say that mm -hmm. earlier, but I gave this issue a 7. Um, I don't know if you want to throw yours in here. I got. I gave it an eight. Yeah, I think the next event is gonna be that House of Brainiac one. Uh, yeah, House of Brainiac, which is gonna be a, a crossover between Action Comics and uh, Superman. So you're gonna have to get up on Superman, Sebastian. Yep. But uh, I think that is probably, if anything, I, I think that's. I think that's had the best chance of beating Night Terror so far because it's. I like. That series a lot, so I like Superman I do a lot. Like so. that series a lot. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, like I said, seven out of ten for the event, or sorry for the uh, for the the issue. issue. I go. think if we're talking core series, I would give the core series a seven out of ten across the board. We're talking the entire event. I'm gonna give it a six. Okay. Hmm. Well, you see, I think. Oh man, I like the core issues a bit better than Night Terrors in this one. I I, I really I I enjoyed this. Uh, event. here's how, here's how I'll put it. I think this is a really good Titans event. I don't think it's a very good DC event. I think it doesn't... Um, this doesn't like, okay. do the kind of stuff where it necessarily has like these... I don't know if we're going to be feeling okay. the ripples from Beast World going forward. And I'm not trying to say that that automatically should mean that's worse than Night Terrors. I don't think we should be judging... I mean, do we really feel anything from Night Terrors, though, either? We did with Dr. Hate. Dr. Hate was the... Uh, I get, the it was introduced yeah. in there. Right. That was kind of the... Yeah. And also, that was kind of they carried that a little bit into Gotham War as well. Um, I, I so here, and I, I, I want to just like make sure I say this. I don't think we should. I don't think the. I don't think how big an event is or how consequential an event is is a reflection of its quality. But yeah, I do think um, that's how I've been looking at it. Is this is a really good event for the Titans, not not so much uh, one for the entire uh, DCU universe. No, okay, I can see your point there. Man, unfair to say Doctor Hate was part of freaking Night Terrors, bro. Doctor Hate was so, introduced at the very end of Night Terrors. I don't know what to tell you. Freaking unfair. Here's bro. the thing, I'm, but I'm counting. I'm counting right for the future of the DC universe. I'm counting Amanda Waller consolidating power at the very end of this. That's again a, kind of a very end thing. I mean. Mm -hmm. it's, 
it's like it's not quite a very end thing, but it's like it's been building since the start of this event. So uh, since the start of um, D- Dawn of DC. So I think regardless, either way, it's either a small part at the end or it's just not counted as part of this event as all, at all. It's just been going on for a while. And then I also yeah. think of now Dark Raven being in the Titans and, you know, capturing um, and trapping uh, Titans Dark Raven. Raven. Um, yeah, yeah. So I and and that's again. I only have to go forward to the DC universe as a whole. Just probably more just the Titan series. Well, as an event, um, I think I'm just gonna give it a flat seven. Well, that um, that is the uh, yeah, that, that, that wraps up Night Terrors. Doesn't even wrap Night Terrors. Night Terrors has been wrapped up. Shit, did I say Night Terrors? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Um. Yeah, that wraps up Beast World. This is the problem with doing a segment called Better or Worse Than Night Terrors after every event. I just think that everything's Night Terrors. Yep. Yeah, which uh, means that we won't be covering an event for a while. Next one is going to be, uh, as mentioned, House of Brainiac. So, yeah, anyway, what do we want to move on to now here? I guess I'll talk about Eden Wood real quick. Okay. Uh, yeah, Eden Wood number series, four. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, writer and artist is uh, Tonius Daniel. And, um, you know, I'm not going to lie, this one wasn't... I didn't find this one that bad. You know, it's not... I still, I still don't think it's great, but um, it, it wasn't bad. I know I said uh, last time we reviewed this that um, if this one wasn't good, I'd be dropping it. But um, yeah, I'm not dropping it yet, actually. Huh. Um, so it starts off with you know we know that um, Bastille he he uh, he helped he got injured in the last issue saving the vampire child, mm-hmm. right? And so this issue, we learn that, um, you know, after they take him to the Witch to get healed or what, and, and stuff, uh, we learn that Bastille is actually a demon himself. And <laughs> that the person whose armor it originally belonged to, so the person, he, the person Bastille squired for, uh, I, think if, I think if I remember correctly, his name is uh, John, John Luke, um... Yeah, so he actually killed him and stole the armor. And so we learn, yeah, and we learn in this one that he's actually a demon. And so the vampire daughter, child that they just saved, like, basically goes on a rampage saying, like, all demons must die. So Rion actually kills her and has, like, an existential crisis because he just killed a child and whatnot. And so... Him and Bastille essentially just, like, dip out because the parents will sense that their child was just murdered, and so, like, a bunch of vampires are going to be after him. And then we go back to the future where Rion's the adult, and he's in this, like, game world, if I remember if I remember correctly, that's what he called it. And a bunch of enemies are chasing after him. I, I think, I can't, I can't remember if that they were his team that, like, are, like, the, like, dream evil or whatever, like, the game evil, I don't know, whatever. Um, but they're, like... Trying to hurt them, but actively as all at the same time helping them by giving them hints. Like one, I remember one of them specifically being like, uh, like he knocked Rion knocked them to the ground, and then they were like, "Hey, be careful with my gun behind you," and he like picked up the gun. Rion picked up the gun and was able to shoot the others because of that. And so at the very end, we meet the game master. And it happens to be John Luke, who like essentially still is attached to the armor because. I guess the way you the um the armor is like attached to the user and the way it like gets it has to get passed on for someone else to be wearing it. And so since Bastille killed John Luke, it was never passed on to Bastille, so it couldn't have been passed on to Rion. So it's still attached to John Luke, and so he essentially like peels it off Rion at the very end. And that's where it ends. I think this one was a bit easier to follow simply because there weren't just so many characters thrown in. Um, you know, the past story, um, has the, technically the four from the third issue, which will be Rion Bastille, the, uh, orange-haired lady who looks a lot like Elsa Bloodstone, and then the vampire child. And then the future one is, takes place in a game world, which I don't remember that they were even in one or something. Like, they are in, like, a dream, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Um, All I know about, all I remember about that is that a baby supposedly runs the government or something yeah yeah i don't even remember that one but yeah i didn't i don't know i didn't think it was that bad this time and um it was a certainly from to me it was much easier to follow this time around so yeah i gave it a seven well uh let's talk about the uh the newest uh the newest uh entry in the energon universe duke number two okay so here's the thing with this one 
Uh, it's mm. not as good as the first one. Uh, I think this issue is, yeah, uh, a bit of a drop for me. I Not to say I didn't like it, but I, I do think it kind of, yeah, it, it uh, goes more into like the G.I. Joe stuff that I'm like, I don't know if I care about this. So essentially, it's, it's Duke on the run. He's on the run. He goes to meet his friend Clutch. His friend Clutch is like a car guy or something, presumably part of the G.I. Joe unit team. And then, uh, you know, they do some, uh, they do some, you know, banter and, uh, and then some, some other guys show up, Rock and Roll and Stalker. Um, and they're like, we're going to take you down. And they do a big fight and a big car chase. And then they, uh, yeah, and then they, they get Duke and Clutch and they wake up uh, underground in some like black ops government holding facility. And uh, then there's some other person there who's apparently named Baroness. Yes. Also, there's some shadowy shots of who is... Uh, apparently Destro, which is a name I know, but I have never seen anything about Destro because I don't uh, know anything about G.I. Joe. Um, what did you think of this one? Yeah, you know, I didn't, th- I didn't, uh, like you said, I didn't quite like it as much as the first one, but um, I still don't think it's bad by any means. Yeah. Um, I think, let me think, Clutch and Duke, um, you know, they've been friends since forever, I guess, since very young. And Just so that's like why us. Duke went there. Yeah. I was just thinking, yeah. actually, the other day, we've known each other for over 10 years now. Look at that. Yep. Look at us go. Look at us go. Who would have thought that we'd be making a podcast about comics together 10 years ago? <laughs> Certainly not me. <laughs> Certainly not. <laughs> um, yeah, and then, uh, I mean, yeah, realistically, you kind of, you kind of like, said everything. Yeah, you, there's you, not you a lot to, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, no. This is what I was saying, just like what you were saying before that, we, before we started recording a little bit. Um, I was saying how I thought this episode was probably going to be a bit shorter, because I really do not have a whole lot to say on most of the stuff we're talking about today. I said that, that yeah. this one is written by Joshua Williamson, and the artist is Tom Riley, of course. I do have that to say about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to, like, like I, I hate being like, yeah, this happened, and uh, yeah, it was it was I. I hate just being like that, and just like, I feel like we're just breezing way too soon over it, so I try to find words, but like, I really... You kind of just said everything. It, it's really yeah. not nothing else happened at all yep. besides what you said. You know, I, I'll, I'll just I'll say this. I didn't I didn't like it as much as the first one. I still don't no think Transformers. It's, yeah, I still don't think it's anything bad. I I'm intrigued by the GI Joe thing, but I think that's just because of like how interested I am in that whole. Like I'm interested in learning about it. I yeah. think I'm, I'm a bit more open to learning about it than like you are. I guess I don't know. Maybe that's just because of. I actually watched the movies in the past, so I'm like, oh, I know some of these people. Like, Baroness, I think I know her. I'm, I'm open to it sure. if it's interesting, but right now, like, I think, I think I'm think i much more excited for Cobra Commander going forward, because I think that's that kind of a more interesting yeah. angle they're taking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited to see some characters from, like, 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 I don't know if they're going to bring in, like, Snake Eyes or anything like that, but, like... I'm sure they will, yeah. I don't know. Eventually. Maybe not Maybe not soon, but I'm sure they will eventually, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's like a new G.I. Joe universe. I don't know if they're going to... I don't know what they're going to do with it. Anyway, I gave it a... I, I was about to say I gave it a zero. <laughs> that is not <laughs> what I gave it. I gave, I gave it a seven. Yeah, I just think, yeah, I, I don't think it was as interesting, and there's not the kind of connectivity to the rest of the Energon universe, which is fine, uh, but I think that also would have helped give me something to latch onto if that had been here and there wasn't uh, mm. that. So I think as a result, because I also found the story less interesting, I, I, I yeah, went for a seven. And I actually almost thought there was a point where I was like, should I give us a six? But I was like, nah, it's a seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, let's see. Let's talk about. Let's do, let's do uh, Batman. Let's do Batman. Batman Off World. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, Batman. Off World, written by Jason Aaron. The artist is Doug Monkey. Uh, this is what I made Sebastian read this week. We both read the first two issues, so not the issue that came out this week. But yeah, what did you what did you think about these two? I think it's definitely an interesting take. I don't. I'm assuming this is like it's either like a, an alternate use of Batman, or it's just taking place at some point in time that like I just I I really don't know. I think it is main universe Batman, but it's supposed to be very early on in his timeline. Yeah, okay, so he, that would make, yeah, see, so that makes sense, okay, I was about to say, I don't know what time this is taking place, or if it's just another universe, but whatever, yeah. um, but, it, you know, it's certainly a different, uh, or an interesting take, you know, like, um, Batman essentially, tra- like, travels into space in order to learn more about aliens so he can actually, like, take them down, which, you know, I think is very interesting, because it's, like, the fact that, like, at this point, he's just surrounded by aliens, so him, yeah. like, going into space to like specifically study them so he learns how to take him down is very batman you know mm-hmm. 
very Batman thing to do. Yeah. And, um, you know, his character, just because he's in space surrounded by aliens, his character doesn't change. He still helps people. Yeah. He still, you know, doesn't want anybody to die, all that stuff, even though they are aliens and this is... And Sebastian uh, thinks Batman should kill people, as we established in the opening. I don't think he should kill people. <laughs> I'm just saying there are extremes at some point. You know what? I still think he... I still think he would. I, I don't... That's not, okay. Story-wise, it's... I think issue two is better than the first one. I, I, I agree with you there. Issue one was establishing how Batman got here, and then issue two was like... More of a training arc uh, issue. And also he just and leaves the ship at the end. He also leaves, almost dies leaving the ship at the end. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, he falls to a planet with big metal dogs. His mentor is a robot, a punching bot. Yes, partially. It's a punching bot and a Tamaranian. Oh, I guess, yeah, she does. They actually do spar. They spar, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I uh, kind of forgot about that part. Um, I did actually, I liked the, um, the robot though, and how it was, how Bruce was using that to kind of like give him information on the aliens that he's seeing and, and facing, and then he can mm-hmm. kind of learn to train against them through this punching bot. And then also how he recruits the punching bot to his side and uses it to help get them off the ship and then tries to go back and save it as well when it like is about to get blown up. I think I liked the, uh, specifically in the second one. When um they're in like that uh I don't remember what it was called but it was like it's like a the uh, the like engine room where they like, had to clear it up like asteroid debris or whatever and Batman like just goes crazy on like the security guards right because they're like about to kill the people yeah. that were working there and he starts punching them and he's like I just kicked this guy in the ribs that was his like his dick his or his balls yeah, yeah yeah or something like that and he's just like I kicked this guy in like the ankle that's his kidney it's just like yeah. What the fuck? Man, this robot really, like, be giving him info. And, like, the fact that he can just remember it and, like, just be yeah. like, okay, this is this type of alien. This is this type of alien. Just like, yeah, it's just like, oh, my God. Like, that's, like, just it's just Batman, man. It's just the fact yeah. that he can, like, retain all this information and yeah. utilize and he it up, like, 12 or, like, 24 of those people in the, uh, in the. In yeah. The well, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I think it's, it was pretty good. I don't know if it was good enough that I'd keep going with it, but, um. I did. I did like it. I thought it was uh, that was kind of fun, you know. Um, it's also yeah. about to have a very inconsistent publishing schedule as well. Like it's taking a break in February and also taking a break in April. So I probably would just end up dropping off this because it's just kind of coming out too infrequently. Uh, but I think I gave both issues a seven. I think they were both pretty good. I but I also I don't think I'm quite as high on the series as most other people are. But I, I do think it's it's. You know, a fun yeah. little, fun little early Batman story about him going off and, and doing stuff. That cover for issue number three is really cool, where he's just riding that big dog. It is. It is. I would give issue number two. Yeah, I'd give it a seven as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go talk about something good here, and that mm. would be let's uh, you know let's let's talk about uh, let's talk about World Tree, I guess. World Tree. This is World Tree number seven, written by James Tinian the fourth. The artist here is Fernando Blanco. This is the issue where I realized I really don't know who is who or what's going on in this series yeah, anymore. Yeah, nope. I, I, and I think it's a testament to the writing that I still liked it quite a bit, because I think it's well-written, I think it's well-paced, and the dialogue all flows really well. But there's a lot of characters, and because this series took like a three-month gap, I don't remember who a lot of these characters are or if they're new or if they were there originally and kind of what their relationships are with each other. So this issue is is kind of split into, I would say, four parts here. There's the first part, which is the World Tree gang kind of trying to figure out what to do next. There's the flashback part where we see a little bit more kind of context and building out the backstory of Gabriel and that other tech dude that they slashed the tires of in the previous issue. Uh, And they're kind of, they're trying to recruit him. Uh, we get the third part, which is fear going in and, like, activating some dude who's in a hospital bed or something. Um, and then there's the fourth part, which is Ellison. Ellison's three sisters show up and, like, beat him up and tie him to a chair. And they're like, you fucking betrayed us! Because it turns out that apparently, uh, for some reason, uh, Gabriel was talking to Ellison's brother, who was the one who freaked out and killed all those people in the first yes. issue. So that is it. That's kind of the only big reveal I would say that happens in this issue. 
Was Silk involved? I feel like she did something, but I don't remember what. Um, she, she was in... or something? No, they interrogated um, the dude from the past that the that they went after, that they slashed his tires. He's in the present as an old guy. And oh, right, 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 right. Yes, now. yes, yes, yes. And so she was a part of that. And then that other random dude, who I think was from last issue, but I don't know for sure, was following her as well when she left. Yes, yeah, she went yeah, to follow some yeah. Other, yeah. I don't know. What do you think about this one? I mean, it's like you said. I, I, okay. So, I, the, the original gang, right? The like the, the World Tree gang. I don't yeah. remember any of their names. I, I remember their it. faces a bit. Like yeah. I remember the bearded guy the most. I want to yeah. say. And besides that, I like some of them died right last issue. If I remember correctly. I don't think so. <laughs> Why are there only three of them? I Where'd don't know. Where the rest know. of them go? No, Gabriel died. That was yeah. it. Yeah, Gabe died, and that was back in number five, yeah. Yeah. Where are the, where are the rest of them? Oh, fuck, I don't know. I think they were a pretty small group. Because it's also, Ellison and Fosta were there with them when that whole thing went down, and then they kind of left after that. Um, no, but I thought there was, like, five of them, though. Yes, it was. Gabriel. It, no, so it was the three, and then it was Ellison and Fosta, who are the, the couple in the cabin. Mm. They were part of that group when World Tree was... Uh, when the first arc was happening, because they're the like one of them got kind of possessed and they had to exercise yeah. the internet demon, yeah. So they that was there, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then they kind of they left to go do their log cabin hangout. Yeah, no, yeah. It was it was Fasta that uh, almost got possessed. Yeah, yeah. And then the log cabin that one came back to me pretty quickly, honestly. Um, yeah, I mean that was just last thought, issue, so. Yeah, that one came. Uh, it's been so long, but uh. Yeah, that one, um, the log cabin thing, it's weird, right? Because the, the sisters kind of just went in swinging. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, one uh, of them. The other two are pretty chill. Yeah, the other two seem pretty chill. Yeah, Azzy. Azzy. Yeah, Azzy's like, is, fuck uh, you, Allison. I'm going to yeah, punch you in the face. Yeah, and that's because she worked for, she used to work for Gabriel. And then she got, she quit when she realized what, like, Gabriel was, like, really doing. And then she just she kn- she discovered or she knew that Gabriel was talking to. Uh, oh, I think it was I think it was she quit and then he started talking to their brother. Ah, uh, yeah, I think that that's what yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. The like yeah, spider yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oof. it seems. Well, I don't know. We're getting more background information, I guess. Yeah. Um, I, was, I thought we were gonna get a bit more of this one, especially since uh, the bad uh, the uh, flashback started happening last. Uh issue but it seems we're still going we're still going to be like just following three different stories again at this or more possibly yeah or possibly more yeah now that silk uh split off from the uh, flashback group essentially uh yeah i don't know i gave it a seven i gave it an eight despite the fact that i don't remember a lot of this i still really like it uh i think again i think the dialogue flows really really well uh i think it's paced very well part of me wanted to give this a nine but i was like I think I would have given this a nine if I had remembered more of it. So yeah, <laughs> as yeah, it kind of yeah. was, I don't know if I can completely justify giving it a nine because I just don't remember what kind of what's going on and what the context is. But I did like it. I gave it an eight. I think it's yeah, still a good series. I'm looking forward to the next one. Okay, too dark ride here. I mean, I still like it. I think uh, I'm kind of. This is another one though because of how inconsistent it's it's published. I just I keep forgetting a lot of what happens. To like to put it in context, there have only been three issues in the past like five months or and, and, and if you like there have only been let's see since may there have only been there have only been four episodes four issues since we started this podcast sebastian despite the fact that that first issue that we talked about came out in july so i think the publishing schedule does kind of hurt this one because it is just it's hard to follow when when you don't remember what happened in the previous issue that being said yeah. Uh, this one picks up after the events where we found out that the kids had their souls sold to the devil by their dad. Because I guess, like, because, like, to finish building the part, the devil needs more souls now or something. And that's why also they seem to be eating customers and stuff. Um, I think it's to keep it running, right? Because to build the part, he sold, he sold, I don't remember what he sold. But then to keep it running. He sold his wife's soul, yeah. No, that wasn't to build it originally, because I think at that point they had already built it. I don't think I I don't know. I seem to remember I don't that remember. Beat, but yeah. I don't remember. Well anyway, anyway. He needs to keep feeding its souls in order to keep it running, essentially. And so that's yeah. why 
and the best souls are like the ones with a lot of love in it. That's why um the uh one that snuck in to try and find her brother. That's why they fed him because he had a true love for the park or whatever. The park for the park itself, exactly. So Halloween knew all of this, and so Sam is just discovering it now, and he is royally pissed um because he thought like his father was like actually a genius not the fact that like you know it's like sicko mode or whatever yeah um and so yeah so sam goes off to try and find his daughter because they uh the they saw him her. yeah the mascots took her into the ride that we saw the uh brother die in so she pops up the end do you think she's alive or not is that a, is that a hallucination or is that actually her do you think <sighs> man that if she actually dead and that demon be doing that, that's... I mean, it's a demon, you know, so it's like... <laughs> yeah, that's in character, royally, yeah. But, yeah, but uh, still, man, that's, that's dark as fuck. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like... I feel like the demons, if anything, they still want Sam to at least love... He sold out the mom, and then he sold out the, the brother, and now he's selling out the daughter, possibly. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, well, there's also there's that, that Sam gets on the ride at the end. To go and mm-hmm. um, and search for his his kid, and the security guard is also there, and gets pretty brutally killed on that thing. Um, he didn't keep his arms inside the vehicle. Not only that, he just jumped out of the out of the cart and just started running into the ride. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I think that uh, I think that did, I think that was probably the, the best scene in the issue because it was just like okay, stuff is happening. So that's the other thing for how how infrequent the series comes out. I feel like it doesn't advance the story enough to really keep me engaged issue to issue like i yeah. like the series as a whole i do and i think each issue is good but it's not really pushing things forward in a noticeable way most of the time so that's why like something when something does happen like that scene on the ride it's like cool great but um yeah i think uh i think that the infrequent publishing schedule just means that even though these issues are good individually because they're so spaced out you don't get a good sense of momentum building from it it just feels kind of disconnected each time each time each time so i don't know I can still like it. Uh, I think I'm going to give it a 7, though. I think I'm going to keep mine at an 8. And I think that's, I'm going to leave it there uh, simply for, like, the ending art, the two ending piece art things that we got. Uh, the security guard dying and then the daughter herself. Both very, very creepy and gruesome uh, looking, which, you know, goes in hand with the cover. So I'm going to leave mine at an 8. Well, uh, let's go talk about Spine Tingling Spider-Man here. Yeah. This is written by, uh, written by Solid and Ahmed. The artist is Juan Ferreira. This is the finale of Spine Tingling Spider-Man, where we find out that it was the Jackal all along. He had, like, uh, he had done, he'd, he'd like, yeah, because we already knew that he had kind of, like, tortured Mysterio into building a bunch of, like, Mysterio stuff. Yes. Uh, and making yes. Spider-Man hallucinate. Uh, so in this one, like, Pete kind of figures it all out, and he also um, gets the, like, drug out of his system that was negating his powers. And he's just on, he just goes on a rampage, and he takes down a bunch of androids, uh, and he then go goes and beats up the Jackal for a little bit. Uh, yep. And uh, again, the art is what is what really just makes this anything, I think. Not to say that the story's bad, again. I think the story's totally fine. Um it's, it's the same writer as Daredevil, and I think the plot is about on the same level that that series, that Daredevil series, has been putting out so far. But the art really does improve the experience here. There's a couple, there's a, a double-page spread where it's it's all silent, and it's just Peter wailing on the jackal, and it just looks so cool. Like, yeah. the art is just, it's it's genuine, it's some of the best Spider-Man art I think there is, period. Um and it works really well in this horror format, but uh, I think it's just, like, period, some of the best Spider-Man art we've had. Do you think there's going to be another one of these? Like, another series? Yeah. Like this? I sure hope so. I think this, this was... I mean, it left it open-ended a bit yeah. at the end. Um, with uh, Peter, right? Because at the very end, Peter has to go... Like, he, he decides to go and make sure, like, he is actually in the real world by visiting, like, all of his loved ones. Like, uh... He calls May, he meets up with Mary Jane, and so at the very end we see him swinging, and, but in the reflection we see it's the jackal swinging. Yeah. And so, you know, it like kind of left it open-ended, but at the same time it's like, who knows, really? Yeah. It could always just be like, yeah, no, nah, he was always in the dream anyway, so it's comics, it doesn't really matter. But, um, yeah, it's like you said, the art in this one 
really, really just still his home. I think the one that, besides that fighting one, the the double page spread, the one that the other one that really got me was when Spider Man first showed up to the at the like in front of the jackal and. The jack was like basically saying like you're still afraid, and you it's just like it was also just like silent, just like silence, and you just saw like the jackal just like creep like just walking down the stairs in front of like that operating table and just like right in front of Spider Man and Spider Man just not being able to move until Mysterio shows up and like basically snaps Spider Man out of that, but just yeah. like just seeing the jackal just like. His weirdly elongated body just, like, creepily walking down the stairs. Ugh. And, like, oh, man, it was just... It's just so well drawn. Yeah. So good. I don't know. I do think um, this issue suffered a little bit for me because I inherently do not like the Jackal. I think he works well enough here, but he's also the source of the most widely hated Spider-Man event ever, probably. Well, okay, maybe second, maybe second most hated after one more day, which is the Clone Saga. So, you know... He's he he is definitely the scariest Spider-Man villain because he made everybody suffer through two years of that fucking story. Um, but uh, oh, what event was it? What what event was this? The Clone Saga. Oh, was that that one was the Jackal? That's from the Jackal. Yeah, that Spider-Man clone. Ben Riley got cloned because from the like the Jackal is the one who clones Peter into Ben Riley. Mm. Um, and then yeah, one more day is probably the most widely hated Spider-Man event because that's the one that erased Peter and MJ's marriage. Um, so. Yeah, so I do think that kind of dips it a little bit for me because I don't like the Jackal. Um, but I, you know, I think this this works well enough. Uh, I would definitely read another one of these Spine Singling Spider-Man series if they do another one. Uh, I think you pretty much have to have Juan Ferreira on art. I don't think you can really do this with anybody else. Um, like, not to say there's not other great horror artists and stuff, but I think just the style that he established in both this and the previous one, I think really worked. So, um mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think it'd be good to continue that. Uh, but anyway, I don't know. I give it a I give it an eight. I think it's it's very good, but not not. Uh, I I don't think I liked it quite as much as some of the other issues in the run. I gave this one a nine. Is this your pick of the week? Would you say? No, well, it's gotta be. It's my highest rated. Okay. Oh, we got gosh. three left. We got three left, mate. We got three left. Let's talk about the Moon Men. Okay. <laughs> um. All right, this is, uh, this is Moon Man number one. It's written by uh, written by Kid Cuddy here. And uh, also co-written by Kyle Higgins. And the artist is uh, Marco Locati. Um, I think this is not great. I don't think it's terrible. I don't know how long I'm yeah. talking in this Australian accent, by the way, as well. No, so, we, so, we, it's Australian for anybody it. who doesn't know. You got to keep it. Uh, yeah, I don't think I can keep this up for the entire episode. I got to be honest with you, mate. <laughs> no, 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 uh, just just this issue. Just, just this issue. issue. Oh man, people are gonna yes. fucking hate this, aren't they? Uh, <laughs> apologies for this wildly fluctuating Australian accent. But anyway, yeah, Michael Lucati's the artist here. I think I don't know if I can. Do... <laughs> I don't know if I can use this accent. <laughs> okay, I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. So yeah, this essentially this uh, this this is I believe Kid Cudi's first comic that he's ever written. I don't know that for a fact, but you are kind of a Kid Cudi fan yourself, aren't you? I, will, I wouldn't say a fan, but it is uh, it is his first. And, um, you know, I, as first go... Oh, oh God, hold on, I gotta... This is a it's fucking shit show of a review. Um, <laughs> but it is his first, and I think as, as far as first go, it's, it's not the worst. I think I think the story, it, it, it's, it can be interesting. I think the way they went about it... I was not that much of a fan of the art at all. It was so hard to follow. Um, I think it has its scenes. moments. I think, uh, here's, here's how it's like. This issue works quite well when it's focused on the moon mystery. Like, what happened up there? Mm-hmm. Why? Like, what's with the missing seven minutes? What's with all that shit? Uh, I also think that's when the art works the best. It's weird and trippy and colorful and splashy. Yeah. Uh, so I think when it's focused on that, I think it's quite good. The problem is... There's a lot of other stuff in there that's fine. I don't think any of it's bad, but I don't think that stuff on Earth is quite as interesting as the space teasers that we do get. From yeah. This. Um. I think. Yeah. I think it's like you said. Um. I think the whole seven minutes mystery is it's very good. It's very interesting, and I think I just think they're rushing into his powers and trying to establish him as a superhero way too quickly. I think if they 
not like they didn't have to like reveal everything in the seven minutes or anything like that but like i don't know explore a bit more into that maybe show us a bit because it's it wasn't just him you know that that was up there um and so like maybe show a bit of them as well like how they're dealing with it or something like that like i know he is supposed to be the main character um but i don't know maybe one or two pages showing them as well uh wouldn't have been bad instead of just showing off his powers all of a sudden and him not even knowing what's going on either so yeah i don't know and that that whole uh rally it's not a rally what's, what's the protest the protest yeah protest um that was what he showed up that was so how did he get there did he teleport there i'm <laughs> so lost I mean, presumably it just, like, skipped the drive that he took in his car to oh to get God. there. Yeah, because he, like, literally, I swear he got the text, and then the next page he was just there. I was like, what? And then he was, so like, in the moon that, thing? It showed that he, that was confusing. I was like, why the fuck is he in this weird space suit? Yeah. Um, I don't like the costume, by the way. I think the costume's not very good. Um, But, uh, yeah, I... <laughs> Yeah, I just it showed um it showed he was like he was texting Micah a lot and it was showing yeah. kind of a period of hours. So I just assumed it was kind of like a couple hours went by, he didn't hear anything, and then he's like, Okay, let's just go to the uh protest and he went mm-hmm. like I don't know, just took the car or something, I don't know. Okay, yeah, and then whatever uh, what whatever his powers are too, that was super hard to follow. I didn't like he like did you like jump onto the ground send everybody else flying away the implication is that it might have been he reversed gravity on himself because of like moon powers i guess just okay. the moon has less okay. gravity because that's oh, yeah, like mike yeah. Yeah, kind of mentioned that we but I, they did not definitely yeah like, he, they were that, flying yeah. and stuff yeah uh, i don't know i just felt like the world like reversed there and maybe that's where you're coming from that it like reversed gravity i just yeah. swear like it was just like it would just look so trippy to me and i was struggling to follow but yeah i think i think i'll give it i'm gonna give it one more just to see yeah um i might as well i really i really do like the mystery of what's going on in like every time it flashes Mm -hmm. back to like a memory of the moon stuff it's just these kind of quick flashes there's not really any dialogue and there's just the art i think that's where the art works best and i think that's like that's the most interesting part of this um not again i think the ground is like the the earth stuff is written well enough i just don't think it's anywhere near as interesting as the as the kind of mystery behind that yeah 100 percent. so yeah i mean i gave it a six yeah i also have it in a six all right well we can move on to uh our second to last issue of the episode here it's incredible hulk number eight all right it is written by philip kennedy johnson the artist here is nick klein um so again this is another thing that like if we kind of there's not a lot to break down in terms of plot points here because it's essentially just uh big monster shows up uh, Hulk and Ghost Rider fight him, and they win. Uh, that's pretty much it. We did get a little bit of, like, because at the end of last issue, this monster had taken over the Hulk's body uh, and kind of yes. trapped uh, the Hulk inside some, like, mind space or something, and also trapped Bruce in there as well. Well, Bruce uh, was already trapped in there because of Hulk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which, by the way, those... those um, the art in those sections where in like the mindscape it's like it almost has this like painted quality to it that's really cool it looks really uh yes. it looks really, really cool um it's just good to have nick klein on on this series right now he's not gonna be on the next three issues but i think he's, he's really great on art in this and then so yeah like once uh and then hulk's like well you can't you can't actually keep me in here and then he just kicks the dude out and then he and ghost rider fight him but here's the thing i i've kind of mentioned some of this stuff i i want to say first of all i really like this issue i think it's very good uh the fight between ghost rider hulk and the monster just so cool like the it's just it's very very cool how they take him down that being said i have mentioned before how i think how i'm a little bit disappointed how hulk has been just dealing with all of these monsters so far without breaking a sweat like he has no trouble with these uh, these guys at all so that's a little bit like okay it kind of means that there's not really much tension there because we know he's just i mean obviously like hulk's not gonna lose to these things probably ultimately but like there's no real point of tension where you feel like he's on the back foot the other thing I feel about this is, again, while I like it overall, or while I like it, while I really like it issue to issue, I'm finding a hard time caring about the plot. I feel like we've kind of lost the plot a little bit here, and it's just these kind of one-off, one-off, one-off monster things. Whereas, like, I don't feel like it's really building to anything in particular, which is not in itself a problem, except that it has set up an overarching threat previously 
that it is now kind of not, it's it feels like it's kind of ignoring it. And I know that these monsters that are being sent are being sent by the mother of monsters, by the eldest, whatever. Um, I understand that, but we haven't seen the mother of monsters, eldest, whatever their name is. I don't remember. Um, we haven't seen them. We also have not seen them really interact with these other monsters. We also don't have any, you know, real interactions between Hulk and these monsters. You know, there's no kind of personal tension there that is really elevating it overall. It's just kind of very, you know, this, this, this arc, this arc, this arc, this arc, and they're kind of disconnected because you don't have those kind of interpersonal relationships that I think are, you know, that, that aren't building up over the course of the series right now. I mean, like we hit you like, yes, there's the Hulk and Charlie, but even then I don't feel like there's been that much development there either. So there's that. And I also just don't like, I like, because we haven't seen much from the main villain of this, I just have not been given a reason to care about that threat because we just haven't seen enough of it. So that's kind of where I'm feeling with the series overall right now. I want to be clear. I still like the series. I really like it issue to issue. I mean, issue to issue, it's great. But I just think overall, I don't, I feel it's feeling a little bit directionless and, and not disjointed, but kind of disconnected and just kind of, it's, it's not giving me many reasons to care about the plot outside of, like, the big, cool monster fights and the body horror. So that's kind of where, yeah. I'm, where I'm at with the series right now. Yeah. Yeah, I know you did say about that whole Hulk thing. It's, it's just too easy for Hulk right now. And when I read this one, I was like, man, he is going to say something about that. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, Hulk did get swatted away. I'll say that. He, he got swatted away. Yeah, but he didn't away. get hurt. Like, no, no. God, yeah. He didn't get hurt at all. I'm just like, at least he got swatted away in this one. I don't know. Uh, did, that, well, that's the... That's the that's the bigger problem I think I have with it is because these monsters are so big, like physically they're huge. Yeah, they're made they're drawn very imposingly, right? Like they are drawn to look very kind of intimidating and imposing. But I don't feel that when Hulk can just take them out, no problem. It's like mm -hmm. okay, oh, yeah. it's a cool design, but like it doesn't really. I don't. It's it's like a weird cognitive dissonance where I'm seeing this thing that I feel like should be very powerful, but it's just getting fucking dumpstered by the Hulk, you know. No, yeah, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you or not anything sure, yeah, there, yeah. but uh, yeah, when I saw that, I was like, when I read this one, I was like, man, he's gonna, he's gonna say something about this, oh, for sure. Yeah, I don't know. I think at this point, I think the uh, the eldest thing is just like getting milked, and I, I'm pretty sure that's what this entire series is supposed to be, like just this like yeah. eldest monster thing or whatever. But it's like, it's like you said, like we haven't seen her in so long, and it's just been these like. Ran other random monsters that yeah. have just been like wherever they show up, and it's just like okay, well, at some point, I feel like the story actually has to move somewhere rather yeah. than them just moving to place to place, just being like monster hunters in general, in a sense, right? And I mean, I guess we got something with Ghost Rider being like protect Charlie because the eldest is gonna go after her because that's like your weakness right now, yeah. I mean, I guess that's something that we know, like, okay, she's going to target Charlie, at least. We know that. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I think, I still think it's good. I still, I still really love the art. I still, the body horror, all that, I think it's still really great. It's just, yeah, I think we're just, we're a little bit lacking in the story department still. Yeah. I mean, every so often so, a character will pop up and be like, oh, the, the eldest is coming for you, Hulk. Yeah, or, like, Betty Ross yeah. will show up and be like, it wants to take the Hulk, and it wants to, like, separate. It's like, okay, but, like, well, maybe why as well? Like, we need, I think we need some, <laughs> like, I'm not asking for, like, everything. I'm not asking for every issue to, like, significantly advance the plot. But I yeah. do think we need something if it's building up to this. Because otherwise it's like, well, eventually we're going to stop caring about the plot. I'm kind of already there. If the individual issue to issue writing was not so solid, if the art was not so great, I don't know if I keep going with the book. Again, I like an issue to issue. I think it works fine from that standpoint. But I do think, yeah, it needs to kind of it needs to do something here to get me actually invested in the plot beyond just the monster fights and the art. And the next art does not look like it's gonna be doing that. So that's another <laughs> like I don't look like it's gonna be getting that. Although I guess like because it's saying like uh the Hulk versus the Angel of Death frozen Charlotte. Which maybe then that maybe means that like Eldis gets to Charlie. If that is like, you know, Eldis gets to Charlie and turns her into frozen Charlotte, then fine. That's cool. That's something, I guess. But um, yeah, I, I do kind of just, I'm like, where are we going here? I want to be clear. It's still so much better than fucking planet, not planet Hulk, uh, Starship Hulk. But um, 
Yeah, I don't know. But as, again, again, I like it a lot. I give this issue a nine. Like, I really like this issue, but I do kind of hope to to get some kind of more substantial uh, stuff to sink our teeth into going forward with the series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave it an eight. Okay, well, that would bring us to the final issue of the week. That being Avengers Twilight number two, uh, written by Chips at RSD. The artist here is Daniel Acuna. I think this is my pick of the week. It's kind of tough between this and Hulk, but I think I'm going to give it to this. Uh, that mm. being said, I don't remember a whole bunch of stuff that, that happens in this. What I do remember is that uh, Cap is suited up. He's working with the Defenders now, officially. He's yes. going out. He's helping some people out. He's, uh, you know, bringing, he's bringing a lot of people back to the headquarters. And then they plan to go on TV and for Cap to give this big speech to, like, inspire people to overthrow the, uh, you know, the dystopian society that has become America Except there's now also a uh, a bullseye that's there, and uh, yeah, so they yeah bullseye's there, and she's uh, she's taking she's taking down some stuff. I don't remember a lot of what happened to this issue. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, for the most part, you got it right. Uh, the defenders, all yada yada. Uh, bullseye is actually part of the Thunderbolts. Right, I meant to mention that. Yeah. Um, they and they were called in by. The president? No, it yeah, was... Yeah, but not really. It's like... Not really. It's, it's like the yes. cousin or brother of Jarvis and the son of Tony. Yeah, and so we learn in this one that, like, the president, like, doesn't really matter. It's Jarvis that, like, essentially runs the country. Yeah. He's the real president. Right. And the president's just, like, a face for the people. And so, yeah, so they call it... He calls... He forces the president to call him the Thunderbolt. And so they go and... They just, like, are in New York waiting for Cap to show up because they, they know for a fact he's going to show up. Another thing that happened in this one was the, uh, Cap tries to re- recruit Kamala Khan. That was, I think, my favorite part of the issue. I totally forgot that happened, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was an older Kamala Khan, and he shows up at her house, um, basically being like, you, you know, I know you're already helping people. Just help me and us help people and she's like i can't i have a family now like you can't be asking me to do this and she like she tells him to get out and after she leaves it cuts to her going into her basement and listening into the defenders like radio channel which is illegal so cap eventually gives the speech right and it does not work i I think it if If anything it it turns public perception Against the defenders and Cap even more, yeah. Yeah, it makes it worse, actually, which really disheartens uh, Captain America. And Luke Cage gives a speech to him. Yeah, he's like, shut up and just deal with it. Keep keep going. Yeah, exactly. And then at the very end, we learn um, that Jarvis is actually just following the plans of Ultron, who, if I remember correctly, was behind H-Day? Uh, it was, no. What it was, it was Red Skull using Ultron. Yes, that's right. Yeah, that was a big thing right. that I completely forgot. Yeah. Right, so isn't Jarvis, right, so isn't Jarvis Red Skull? I think it is. Yeah, I think he might be. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I think he's just using a disguise. And yeah, and Jarvis... Ultron's, Ultron's still here as well. Ultron yes. Is, yeah, he has the head of Ultron. So, it, like, kind of like how Tony's son has Tony's head. Uh, yeah. Red Skull has Ultron's head, and he's using that to, like, follow through with Ultron's plan. Or, no, he's using him to, like, help utilize his own plan, and then he's going to give the Earth to Ultron at the end for helping him or whatever. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. big reveals. Big reveals at the end of yeah. this one. Yeah, that scene between between Steve and Kamala is fantastic. That's, like, the, ty- mm-hmm. the type of writing that really... I think Chips at RC signs with, shines with. And uh, yeah, so that was fantastic. I And I think that is kind of the scene that nudged this into my pick of the week as opposed to Hulk, though I did I did like Hulk a lot as well. Yeah, so just very good. And then they also, the, yeah, they, uh, Cap at the end is like, we're going to go break Tony out uh, yes. and get help from Iron Man. Yeah, so. That's what it was. That's what it was. And also, I think Jarvis is like, to Tony's son is like, you need to get into the Iron Man suit and be Iron Man yourself. So anyway, I think this is still great. Um, Mm -hmm. It's just like, Mm -hmm. it's really just, you know, fantastically written and paced and the dialogue again is so, so good. I think this is just kind of the, the, you know, deep kind of deconstruction of society writing that Chips at RC is really good at. And it just works really well here. I gave it a nine out of 10. Yeah, I gave it, I gave it an eight out of 10. I gave it an eight. 
Okay, well, that uh, wraps up this episode here. This week, we've got stuff like The Avengers number 10. We've also got stuff like uh, Batman, the, the the Joker year one story is starting. Uh, and by the way, Avengers number 10, it's that, that's the conclusion of that Twilight Dreaming arc. So we'll see what kind of happens there. Uh, Joker year one, eh, I don't know. I don't really care that much. I, lo- I love Chips and Arsky, as I just mentioned, but like this, you know, what? I'm not it's bad. Joker. Best yeah, I think Joker's very overrated. So that's my hot take. Uh, <laughs> that is a I'm very saying, hot take. I'm not um, saying he's a bad villain. I'm just saying he's overrated. I think people like like him more than he's actually a good character. But uh, anyway, Birds of Prey is also coming out this next week. We've thought about this. Uh, I'm going to give this, I think, two or three more issues. And if it's not picking up again, I'm going to drop this series. But I do kind of generally like... I like a lot of what it's done. I just think it's inconsistent. Uh, Captain America number six is next week. You can be damn sure that I'm going to make Sebastian read that. This is the end of that first arc. And um, I've read uh, a little over half of it. And I'm not going to say what I think about it. But I think it's pretty good. So, (laughs) Jesus. What am I doing? (laughs) Anyway, uh, we also have a uh, a new series based on Dark Souls. Dark Souls The Willow King is next week. Uh, we also have Fantastic Four number 17. I'm actually up to date on the series again, so I may be talking about that one. Uh, we also have The One Hand number one. This is kind of a cool... Uh, uh, it's one of two series that are coming out here soon, uh, where each series tells a particular angle of the same story. This one is a detective. Uh, the other one is going to be called The Six Fingers. That is about the serial killer that the detective is trying to take down. Then we also have... Uh, the big one, which is Ultimate Black Panther number one. Now, uh, we are recording this on the day this issue came out. It is very difficult to find this issue. Uh, they are essentially all sold out because of how popular Ultimate Spider-Man 1 was. And so nobody was able to, like, comic shops didn't anticipate that, so they didn't order enough copies. And so now, apparently, like, the cover are going for, like, $40 already. Um Jeez. And, like, every shop I went to, they only had variants. So, and the variants were, like, $20 variants as well. So, I doubt that this series will be as, like, will live up to that hype. But, um, could still be pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of the big one for, for next week. Anything you have to shout out here? Thanos. Yeah, that's a fucking weird series. I hope he doesn't drive another pickup truck. Okay, well, that'll wrap up the episode. Uh, Thank you, everybody, for watching or listening. If you are on YouTube and you enjoyed the video, you can, of course, leave the video a like. And you can also subscribe to the channel if you uh, would like to see more of our content. You can also uh, hit the bell notification if you would like to be notified when we post new videos so that you do not miss any uploads. If you want to let us know what you think about the current comic uh, state of things, you can uh, let us know in the comment section here. You can let us know what some of your favorite series are, some of the stuff you're looking forward to coming up. If you'd like to let us know all your thoughts on comics uh, and you're listening over on Spotify, you can do so at earthsmightiestcomicspod at gmail.com. Uh, that is our email address over there. And then uh, you can also follow the show on Spotify as well as so you can make sure to not miss an episode when we post stuff over there as well. So, yep, that'll wrap it up for this week. Thank you again, everybody, for listening or watching, and we will see you in the next episode.